In this video, we're going to take a look at creating ourselves a virtual machine using a software called VirtualBox, which is provided us, to us now by Oracle. And so this is a free application you can use to create your own virtual machines running on your computer. And if you're not familiar with a virtual machine, basically what this allows us to do is it allows us to create ourselves a, a window that's running another operating system, and it uses our hardware. Um, basically, they've got drivers for this, and it uses a virtual instance of our hardware here to be able to run another operating system within an operating system. And so this is great for testing out operating systems um, without having to worry about dual boots or having another computer to run them on. And the nice thing about it is when you're done and over with this, you can actually just delete it. And so this is great for testing out new stuff without actually having to commit to installing it on your computer. So let's go ahead and begin by creating uh, a new virtual machine. I'm going to choose new and the wizard comes up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next type in a name for the virtual machine that I want. I'm going to call this one Windows 7. And you'll notice that the operating system just changed here for us. And so I'm going to hit the drop down arrow. We get to choose between the different operating systems and then the versions of them as well. And I actually need to change this to a Windows 7 64 bit. Now the name of our operating system is just a descriptive name that we give it. And actually you'll see on the left hand side here all of the names that have given different operating systems. And so you can get real specific about this if you want and call it something else other than just the default operating system name. And that's okay. What's important is the fact when we go through that you set up the settings. And this right here by setting up the OS type will give us our recommended default settings for the operating system we chose. So it's a good idea to have that set. Let's go ahead and hit next. And now I have the option of setting how much RAM I want to use. Now 512 was the recommendation here. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to beef that up a little bit to a gig. And I've got a total of 8 gigs on my operating system. And what you should do is you should find a fair balance between the two. I don't want to use all my RAM up because my host operating system, which is the one that you have installed on the computer itself, has to have RAM to operate as well. So I can't use everything. So what I need to do is find a fair balance between them and this gives me plenty of RAM left over for my host operating system. So now my guest is only going to use 1024, my virtual one is only going to use 1024. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And now I get to set up my, or the option for my hard drive. Now I don't have a hard drive existing already for this computer. So what I want to do is I'm going to choose to create a new one. However, if I've downloaded a virtual hard drive or something um, similar that I moved one over from another computer, I may choose to use an existing one and then find that one. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next here. And I've got the option between dynamic and fixed. Now dynamic means that it will grow in size. Now I said, let's say 20 gigabytes is the size of the hard drive I want. Well, if the operating system gets installed and it only takes up five, well then on my host operating system, it's only going to take up five, which is great. And it will grow to the limit that I gave it. Whereas fixed just creates the whole thing regardless if it's being used or not. So I like the dynamically expanding storage. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And now we get to choose the name of our um, hard drive. Now this is just Windows 7 by default. If you want to change it up a little bit, like put HDD, um, doesn't matter what you type in here as long as it's not an existing name um, already on the exact same folder. But for whatever reasons, I'm going to go ahead and just call this one Windows 7 HDD and I'm going to set it as 20 gigabytes and we're just going to go ahead and hit next. And we'll go ahead now and just hit finish and it's basically a review of everything we've just done. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit finish again. And now my operating system needs to be installed on my virtual machine. So I've created the virtual machine, but I don't have an operating system actually on there. What I need to do is install it just like I would a normal computer. So if I go ahead and hit start now on my virtual machine that I just created, I've got the option here of running the wizard first. And so basically what this is going to do um, is, or the first run wizard, which is going to do is it's going to allow us to try to find the location of the CD or the ISO file of my operating system. So I'll go ahead and hit next and it's going to ask me if I want to use my host drive. If, it's, if you've got it on your host drive, basically if you've got it on a CD-ROM, then go ahead and pick the CD-ROM of choice. My CD-ROM is drive D. If it's an ISO file that you downloaded of an operating system, you can actually choose that here as well and then it will boot up without having to burn it to a CD. So that's a great option to use as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit next and I go ahead and hit finish and now my operating system here is booting up uh, or running and basically it'll run just like it would on a normal live CD of a computer where we're going to actually have 
uh, it load up the files and I have to install my entire operating system as I go through. One other thing that I want to point out is if you're running this, it's going to be basically using a network um, that's going to be set up as its own basic private network. And so you may want to change it to a bridge. And if you hit devices up here, you can go to network adapters and it's running up here but what you've got an option of is choosing it from its own NAT which is basically its own private address that it creates to a bridged adapter and a lot of times I recommend the bridged adapter only because what it will do is it'll actually use your video card and give it a or network card excuse me and give it a, its own IP address within your, within your own private network say if you're at home and you've got your own private network it'll actually share your network card and give it a separate address and so that way you can communicate with the other computers on your network so it's up to you whether you want it to be on its own private network or if you want it to join the one um, that, that's on your guest network well guest operating systems network then you would choose a bridge adapter otherwise you would leave it as NAT and either way it works fine um, it should give you both network connections if your computer is connected to the network and I'm going to go ahead and finish installing this operating system. This concludes the video on setting up a virtual machine for VirtualBox.